welcome to Country Tracks. Norfolk has a rich and varied range of habitats from the wild north coast to the busy waterways of the broads. A landscape for every imaginable creature, common and rare, watery or winged. And as it's the fifth largest county in England, there's plenty of room for the wildlife to roam. Despite all of the water, Norfolk is actually the driest county in the UK. And although the broads look like they've been here forever, they are in fact man-made, created by peat digging here in the Middle Ages. Peat was used as fuel and the holes which were left once the peat was gone eventually filled with water as the tides rose. Now there are 200 kilometers of navigable broads as a result. Mark Wilkinson and his faithful companion, Mr. Darcy, are guiding me through the waterways in a canoe. Mark runs an outdoor adventure company specializing in canoeing and bushcraft and regularly takes people out on the water. Who is it that's coming and doing these trips with you? Because you do this quite regularly, don't you, for different people? We do. We have all sorts of groups, everything from scout groups all the way through to families. So, yeah, everybody. Yeah, she said, talk me through what's ahead of us, because obviously we're canoeing at the moment and then we're going to try and stay out on the banks of the river tonight, are we? Yeah, basically uh, what we've done, we've negotiated with private landowners so we can use some of the land, because uh, wild camping is not allowed on the broads at all. Yeah. And uh, so we've got a little site where we're going to haul into the woods, we're going to build some shelters to sleep under, and we're going to cook over open fires, and uh, after that, who knows? A complete adventure. We're starting out paddling downstream on the River Bure, at the very north of the Norfolk Broads, close to the village of Oxnead. When there are broads and there are broads, I think of broads with big white motor cruisers, so how come it's so quiet here? Basically, we're on the unnavigable stretch of the river, so uh, the broads uh, run up and through the river system, but then you hit a lock. Well, obviously, that stops the river cruisers from getting up here. The canoes are the only way down here, and uh, even even that's not so easy, because uh, getting in and getting out and finding places to get in and get out is, uh, is quite difficult as well. Now, Mr Darcy's just popped up. Is he always a, a paddling companion of yours? <laughs> yes, yeah, he comes everywhere with me. He's, uh, he's been doing it for years and he's well trained. Now, obviously, we're in a pretty sturdy canoe here, but how would people have traditionally come along this stretch of water? Yeah, in the old days, they, uh, they used to transport all the goods all the way up to Aylsham, which is a market town up in North Norfolk. Uh, in a boat called a wherry, was specifically designed for coming up Norfolk rivers. Because they were uh, sailing boats, they needed the wind, so whenever a tree popped its head up, the wherryman used to cut it down. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> suddenly a very clear passage along the river. Exactly. Yeah, you, you find that there's long stretches with no trees at all. So we've passed a few reed beds. I mean, what sort of landscapes you tend to see from, you know, low down on the water here? Early in the year, when the plants haven't grown up, you obviously get a very good view over the landscape itself. As uh, the year goes by and it grows up further and further, the nettles in particular um, just start to block it out a bit. But what you do then get is a lot of the wildlife comes down to the riverside. So you get to see the reed warblers yeah, and the um, sedge warblers. So you get lots of birds that come right down, right beside the river. Our destination is further downriver, where later Mark will teach me how to survive under the stars for the night. Right, OK, Joe, so what we need to do, we need to get moving because of the light levels. Yep. And uh, so what we are going to start with, we're going to start with some saws. Saws? We need to build ourselves a frame. What we're going to do, we're going to build a frame for our shelter and then we're going to clad it. OK. Because what we're doing, we're only building a shelter that you're going to sleep in. Yeah. That's all we're going to do. We're not going to build a shelter to live in. We haven't no got time suite. for that. No. no, exactly. No en suite. Let's okay. uh, first off start taking a look at some of these stems over here. So this is a hazel. Right, and as you can see, previously coppiced. So it's got plenty of wood for us to work with. It's a very fast growing tree. So by taking a few of these stems out, we're not actually doing any damage to the tree itself at all. So we're looking for initially two things. One is our major stem, which is going to be our upright to hold the ridge pole, yep. and then our ridge pole. So the ridge pole has just got to be very long and straight. Yeah. Uh, and our upright needs to have a fork in it. Yeah. 
I'm going to get the long straight pole. Yep. Now what I want you to do, I want you to find that uh, that V forked pole so that we v can actually. V forked pole. It's going to need to be by the time it's planted in the ground. All right. The V needs to be around about three feet high. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. That's fine. And having just spotted one right here, is that too thick? Because it seems to have quite a healthy V it's on got it. Quite a healthy V on it. No, that should be all right. That should be fine. Mark has established good relationships with the landowners here, so it's OK for me to be hacking at this tree. We've got half a tree here. After selecting the perfect stick and with the help of Mr Darcy, I have to sharpen the end that's going into the ground and trim off the top. I've managed to find your ridge pole. Thankfully, in Norfolk, the ground is pretty soft because it's mainly all wet. <laughs> so, uh, this, this, this end? Yeah, so if we're going to build that way, are you out facing out that way? No, I might have made it off my own back here, but it's quite a thick piece of wood, isn't it? Mm. This is where those um, <laughs> extra few pounds help. Yeah. I did have a cheeseburger at lunch. There you go. Pretty solid. So our ridge pole is basically going to come something like this. Looking good. All right. Test it for length. That's exactly. You test it for length. You just need your head right by the doorway. Obviously, what we've taken into account, prevailing conditions. So if we'd had a blowing wind this way, yeah, yeah, which was likely to carry any rain, then you're in the perfect position. Yeah. Yeah, because any rain would be going that way. Yeah. I would miss you. So and ultimately... It blow into the yeah, shelter. This is absolutely fine. Great. Yeah, where we are now. So all we've got to do now is just fill it up. <laughs> All this lot needs to do is basically support the thatching material. There's loads and loads of it around here, and that's Norfolk Reed, some of the best thatching material in the world. Yeah. Uh, used on all your country cottages. We're going to use it on your shelter. Well, I think, let's just double check. Yeah, sunlight free zone. Not bad, not Ish. bad. <laughs> as uh, the proof of the pudding, as they say, is going to be if it pours down overnight. But uh, considering the amount of time that we've taken to do it, then uh, no, I think you've done a good job. Great. Well, we did get our priorities slightly confused, didn't we? We built a shelter, but we forgot to put the kettle on. So. Uh, Shall we? I think we need to. Let's keep the fire well away from this, though. <laughs> As darkness falls, there's nothing else for it but to enjoy the warmth of the fire, roll out our sleeping bags, and get ready for a night in our own handmade shelters. Right. And a bit of smoky hot water. Shelter good. In the sleeping bag. Not the most glamorous way to get into bed, but I think it's gonna work. So without more ado, good night. Waking up to the birds and bright sunshine at 7am, I've had a good eight hours sleep. I might not look it, but I feel surprisingly well rested. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, good morning. That was actually a very pleasant night's sleep. I'm pleased to report, and it didn't rain which is great. So uh, everything is nice and dry. Uh, and it all went to plan. Look at that. Almost sorry to leave it behind. A warm little cocoon. So you're out here all the time doing this. 
What's the best bit of it for you? What makes you smile? Is it the mornings? Yeah, to be honest with you, Joe, it's the bit you missed. The, uh, I went out for a paddle this morning at about quarter past six and uh, saw the otter down the, down the dike here. And it's just absolutely stunning. And as you can hear, it's absolutely quiet. Just got the birds, just chilled out. Yeah, and it is a particularly nice morning, but I suppose no matter what the morning, it's always different, isn't it? Always different, yeah. Depending on the atmospherics and the weather conditions, you get different sorts of animals coming out. And uh, yeah, you're away from your computer, away from your phone, just mm. chill out, relax. It's the only time I stop. We're still in Norfolk, it's lovely, but we're not in the middle of a, of a jungle or, or a mountain range somewhere. So we could survive, you know, we could probably find a pub or something to, to eat in or whatever. But these skills, how important is it they're passed down between different sort of generations, different people? They, um, they have their uses in the real world, and this is what I think a lot of people don't understand. Lighting a fire, yeah, well, how many of us have barbecues? Mm. How many times do we hear in the course of a year people getting in hospital due to throwing petrol on it? Well, if they know how to light a fire, yeah, um, it all relays back. Yeah, so there are still pl practical applications in our lives and uh, this sort of brings them together. Very much so, very much so. Well, that was brilliant. There is nothing quite like building your own shelter and then sleeping in it to give you a sense of achievement. And also, if you haven't been camping for a while, just a reminder how great it is to wake up outside in the fresh air. You can't really beat it. Anyway, good weather this morning so far. Lots to do today, so on to the next stage of my journey.